groups emerged from their forest home in Central Africa and forced scientists to reconsider the purpose of any kind of sex. These two, gazing into each other's eyes, are male and female. But as primatologist Franz de Waal realized, bonobos will have sex with male or female partners, with young and old, while feeding or playing or carrying young. And they have sex often, all day long in fact. Yeah, the sexual behavior of the bonobo I think is the most flexible sexual behavior that we know outside of the human species. I usually call bonobos pansexual in the sense that I would never call them homosexual because they have not an exclusive orientation at all to one sex or the other. Uh, so, so they use sex in all combinations of individuals, basically free for all. Female bonobos only have young every six years or so, yet they have sex whether or not they are in estrus, and even while they are pregnant or feeding young. Even the very young have sex, face to face. If any creatures are to break the long-held theory that all animal sex is somehow linked to reproduction, it is these bonobos. A favorite theory attempts to give all this sex a social purpose, linking it to dominance behavior. A high-ranking male putting a youngster in his place. But it's not the whole story for bonobos. Youngsters and low-ranking animals often mount their elders and betters, and as such, the sex often appears reciprocal. So why do bonobos spend so much time and energy having sex with so many different kinds of partner? As far as choosing partners for sex, uh, I think it is partly dictated by social bonds, by political strategies, uh, and partly by tensions, because uh, when tensions increase between bonobos, it is translated into sexual behavior. Food induces competition, and instead of fighting with each other, that's why we call them make love, not war, apes. Instead of fighting with each other, they have sex and then they share the food afterwards. These make love not war apes often have sex face to face, a position once thought to be the sole preserve of humans. Deval is as aware as any scientist of the dangers of making links between these highly sexual apes and humans. But there is one point he feels bonobos make very strongly. Well, I think what the bonobo tells us is that um, the sexual life of close relatives of ours is extremely flexible and very rich. And so people who claim that the only function of sex can be reproduction are wrong on the bonobo and are probably very wrong on us because sex can have multiple functions and can be very variable within a larger society. And homosexual behavior? It's marginalized only in certain cultures. It's almost as if yeah, it was pushed in a corner and as, as a result people who have homosexual interests became exclusive homosexuals, whereas actually they might be uh, bisexual, and the same is maybe true for many heterosexuals. So there's a sort of divide between the two that is maybe not naturally there, but culturally created by intolerance. Certainly in bonobos and in other primate societies that have been studied, animals engaging in homosexual behavior do not seem to be marginalized. On the contrary, their behavior is just another part of everyday life.